powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith and Abuela, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. Made will rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transmitting broadcast as we bring forth God's word today. And today I'll be sharing with us the benefits of our partnership in the gospel. It's the preaching of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is one of the keys to unlocking greater possibilities. If we truly want to reach our full potential, we have to be involved in the preaching of the gospel. It gives your life a sense of direction. It helps you to utilize your potential. It helps you to maximize your time. And God has called us into a life of liberty, into a life of power. But we need to take advantage of everything God has given to us to advance the kingdom. One of the key questions you need to ask yourself today, what am I doing? That is helping others to experience the power of the gospel. What are you doing today that someone could boldly say, Hey, because of you, my life is changed, my life is transformed, today I can do the right things because you're doing this and you're doing that. Is it partaking in partnership is important? The, the success of the ministry of Apostle Paul was not based only because Paul was an apostle. There were people who made that ministry a success. They used their gifts, they used their talents, they used their resources to ensure that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ went from one city to the other, from one nation to the other, because of their partnership. You see, when we partner, with the gospel by supporting ministries or people who are preaching the gospel to encourage them to keep preaching the word of God. That is one of the keys to great prosperity. The Lord spoke to me and he said, he said, if you want to see prosperity, so into the preaching of the gospel. If you want to see prosperity, if you want to see increase, he said, consistently get involved in helping the preaching of the gospel to go forward because if he that is watered right is going to be watered if you are getting involved in helping more people to receive the gospel of our lord jesus christ there is a great benefit for that so one of the ways we unlock supernatural prosperity is when we get involved in supporting the preaching of the gospel. There are so many people today who are just on the receiving end. They just want to receive. They just want to be prayed for. Even when they get blessed and doors open for them, they don't come back and say, Lord, I want to say thank you to you. I want to thank you for prospering me. I want to thank you for helping me. I want to thank you for opening doors to me. They, they are not committed to appreciating and acknowledging God for what he's doing in their life. When we choose to partner, we have decided to change the lives of people. Partnership is one of the ways we change the lives of people. Most people don't know this. This broadcast I do every day is because people are partnering with me. They say, Apostle, I'm giving you a right sign of fellowship. You need to continue teaching. You need to keep ministering to people on different platforms. You see, if the preaching of the gospel is not your primary vision, it is an indication that you now reach your full potential. If the preaching of the gospel, if you don't have the preaching of the gospel in your budget, how much do I give to help this message go forward? How do I support this local church or this ministry where I consistently receive the word of God from?
You know, some people keep receiving the word of God, but they don't care how those people put everything together financially to be able to stream those videos, those teachings to which more people be among the saints who show some care. Be among the believers who shows care. You know, Paul, I, I like to read the scripture in Second Corinthians. In Second Corinthians chapter uh, 9, thank you Holy Spirit. In Second Corinthians chapter 9, I like to read uh, Second Corinthians chapter 9, thank you Holy Spirit. In Second Corinthians 9, verse 6, now, I like us to look at this. He said, He said, This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountiful. You know, bountifully. You know, he said, For every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You know, what he's saying here is that. The way you sow determines also what you can receive. The way you sow. There are people who felt like, well, all I have to do is just to go around, listen to the word of God, and I walk away. And I have nothing else I should do or get involved in ministry. No. No. That's wrong. If you are hearing the word of God, you are also expected to accept the responsibility in helping more people to hear that message. That's a great person. A great person is looking for opportunity for more people to hear that message. How can more people listen to that teaching? You're, that's a partner. A partner is a person who has the potential. He may not have the finances to give, but he can pray for the ministry. He can share the videos. He can be able to help in one way or the other. When we come to partnership, it's not only money. There are many ways we can partner with a ministry, with a ministry to be able to reach more people for Jesus Christ. You can go by putting it on your Facebook page to tell people to listen to this teaching, to encourage friends to listen to this material, to help them grow in their work of faith. Partnership is actually an opportunity from God for which to get involved in ministry. As a partnership is an opportunity from God for we all to get involved in ministry. It's partnership for every one of us to be involved in ministry. So here Paul was sharing, he said, and God is able to make all grace abound to us here. You can grow in your commitment to Jesus. You can grow in your commitment to Christ. You can grow from one point to the other. You can make progress in your work with God. So you don't get to a point where you say, Oh my God, I don't think I have what to give. I don't think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. A lot of preachers couldn't continue in ministry because most of them never had the funds to continue. But somebody may say, Well, God called them. If God called them, God should provide for them. Yes. Do you know that God can speak to someone to do something and they say no? Every time we say no, or knowing to us, is affecting God's vision for other people. Sometimes God will ask you, go do this. You don't even know it's not about you. It may be about someone in Asia, someone in Asia, someone in China, or someone in America whose life is connected to that instruction and your, your decision to obey that instruction will change their lives. Most people don't know this. They think that when God is talking to them, it's just about them. No, sometimes when God is talking to you, it is not only about you. There are people who are connected in that instruction. Your obedience will determine how they get blessed by that instruction. Your obedience will determine how they get blessed because you obey God, you're opening door for more increase. You're opening door for more harvest. Your partnership in the gospel helps the gospel to continue reaching more people. This is how it goes. Your, your partnership. So imagine if our ministry today, and maybe those who are supposed to partner with us are not partnering with us. There are certain things that God may want us to do, but he wants us to come together to do it. He, he wants to give a word. This person may have the word. This person may have the finance. This person may have the water. But together when we bring all the resources together, it will help in moving the gospel forward. It will help.
In moving the gospel forward, we shouldn't be the generation of people who keep taking but who don't accept the responsibility to move the gospel forward. We shouldn't be that generation. Be the generation of people that Paul who said, Great Priscilla and Aquila for me. He said, They are my helpers in Christ Jesus. Paul was bold to say that Priscilla and Aquila are his helpers in the ministry. He was born to say that, that this man and his wife, they are my helpers in the ministry. They stood with the ministry of Paul. How do you know a great person? He has the ability to stand with what God is doing until that thing is being accomplished. We should be the kind of believers that, that doesn't abandon those that God has connected us to. You know, some of us little things we can abandon what God has called us to do and then we'll become offended, we'll become angry, we'll become bitter. No, no, that's not how spirit led people live. If you want to be a spirit led man or woman, you don't have to allow offense to control your life. You don't have to allow offense to control your life. God can give you an instruction. Your obedience to that instruction will lead to increase. Obedience, there is a great benefit. There is so much blessing involved when we partner with the preaching of the gospel. You look at that woman that, that uh, God spoke to Elijah and said, go to the widow of Zarephite. He said, dear, will I sustain you? When Elijah got to the place, the woman doesn't have much. The woman doesn't have much, you know. Imagine me, God sending me to a widow and said, the, the widow will sustain you. You know, the first place, I said, Lord, oh, why send me to a widow? Why not send me to someone who, you know, you know, I would just look for reasons to tell God. I said, why are you sending me there? I don't like people. Would, people would think I want to take advantage of her, but not Elijah. Not Elijah. He said to Elijah, go to the widows that I find. He said, they will like sustain you. How? Elijah showed up. The woman was just gathering sticks. The woman was broke. She doesn't have anything. But the reason why God sent Elijah to that woman was because that woman will be sustained by the anointing that God has put on the life of Elijah. And the woman said, I have nothing. The only thing we have is a little thing we have. We will prepare it and eat. And me and my son will die because the famine was grievous. But Elijah, the man of God, demanded, please, can you give me a little to eat? And when she gave a little to Elijah to eat, you know what happened? The, the, the word of God came. Elijah spoke the word of God and the woman came into increase. One of the ways we see increase is when we partner with the ministry God has connected us to. That's one of the ways we see increase. When we we'll partner, partnership is the key to increase. Partnership is the key to increase because partnership gives us opportunity to contribute. God can as well do it without getting us involved. I said, God can as well do whatever he wants to do without getting us involved. God can, Jesus can appear to all the sinners in one minute. I said, what Jesus can appear to all the sinners in one minute and every one of them get born again. So there is no even need for we to preach the gospel. But why did God want you and I to preach the gospel? Because he wants to recognize us. He wants us to know that we are relevant to him. We are important to him. We are part of his plan. We are part of his program. So when God gives you an opportunity to partner, it's an opportunity to move your life forward. In Luke chapter 5, Peter, uh, Simon had a struggling business. Things weren't working out fine. Everything was looking dry. And Jesus showed up and said, can I have your boat? Imagine Simon said, why would you tell me to, have, to give you my boat? This boat is my fishing business. I don't want to share it with you, preacher. But you know what happened when Jesus said, give me your boat? He, he, he gently just gave him the boat. That is partnership. He partnered with Jesus. With that boat, Jesus sat on that boat to minister to more people. And look at what happened. When Jesus was done with preaching, he said to Peter, launch into the deep. You see, you're going to reap what you're sowing. Whatever we are sowing is what we're going to reap. I'm going to reap what I'm sowing. If I'm not sowing good seed, that means I'm getting ready for bad harvest. If I'm sowing good seed, that means I'm getting ready for good harvest. So we, we are directly reaping what we are sowing. And God is calling us into partnership. 
partnership, you're hearing the message, you're hearing the teaching, you've been receiving the word of God from this ministry. The question is, how do I support? How do I connect? Apostle Pittman, what does it cost to do this? What uh, I don't have much, but this is the little I can give to ensure that many people are able to hear the word of God. If you're not kingdom of God minded, it is an indication that you need minded. We don't have to be need-minded. We have to be kingdom of God-minded. And when you're kingdom of God-minded, you think partnership. You think how the gospel can reach more people. You would not say, well, this person would do it well. That person would do it well. This person would do it. I am facing some project right now. No, but we need to begin to understand that when it comes to the gospel, we should always consider ourselves being the ones doing it. We should say to ourselves, Lord, I want to get involved in the preaching of the gospel. I I don't know how much bills are, but I'm going to support in the preaching of the gospel. I'm going to give to ensure that the broadcast continue every day. Can I say this to you? If what we are teaching is blessing you, there is a need for you to give us a right hand of fellowship and said, Apostle, let's take this message to the next level. Let's help more people with the gospel. Let's minister to more people. I notice that so many people are selfish when it comes to the gospel. I'm telling you, people will prefer to pay their bills than to support the preaching of the gospel. But I've also seen people who love God and say, Lord, you will come first in my life. I'm going to support that the message will continue to reach more people. They are Christians since they got born again. They have not won one soul. They have been born again for 20 years. There is no one soul they have ever won to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't support in any way. They just they are just Christians for Christians' sake. But they are not building lives. They are not changing lives. They are not contributing to the preaching of the gospel. That is not good. The, it, when in Ephesians chapter 4, if you read from verse, from verse 11 to 12, when Paul was sharing, he said, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelist teachers, uh, pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, that the saints would do the work of the ministry. Now, if those apostles, those prophets, are not equipping the saints, that simply means there is no ministry. So, you see, partnership helps us to be able to reach out to more and more people. And the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in these last days can only reach more people through the power of partnership. No message of our Lord Jesus Christ to go into the nation. Everyone has to be working as a team. The question today is, have you discovered your place? Have you discovered where God has called you to partner? Have you discovered who God wants you to go and join and stand with them and encourage them in ministry? Where are you partnering? Who are you partnering with? Who are you supporting in the ministry as he can continue to preach the gospel? The local church you attend, have you ever given the pastor a cup of water before? The ministry that feeds you on YouTube or on Periscope or on Facebook, you always go to that blog, you're reading from them, you're, you're listening, you're, you're receiving revelation, you're building your... Have you ever contacted them? Have you ever said, this is a, a, a dime, this is this, you know... Have you ever gone out of your way to ensure that those who are helping you to grow up spiritually, you are also encouraging them to keep helping more people? The Bible said that Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. Paul planted, Paul was the one doing the planting. Apollos came and was watering it. Then God brought the increase. That is partnership. That is partnership. Let us make man in our own image. Partnership. If you look at the Bible from the beginning to end, you will see where God was always in collaboration with men. He wants to work with them. Let's do this together. Let's do that together. Let's deliver these people. Let's change the life of these people. Let's do this. God is always in partnership. Look at Jesus. He came. He picked 12 men. That is partnership. He knew that him alone can do the job, but without partnership, he will not, the ministry will not continue. Jesus have gone, have gone to heaven, and today you and I are here preaching the gospel. That is partnership. Get involved in the preaching of the gospel. Get involved. Most times say, oh, I don't have a job. But it doesn't matter if the little money that comes into your hand. You can say, well, this is just $10, but I can give it. This is just $5, I can give it. This is just one. Whatever it is. But you're, you're, you're believing God to reach out to more and more people around the world. 
what, whatever it is, you're, you're reaching out to more people to be able to receive the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say this to you? God has called you to make a difference. Don't stay behind. And when you're faithful in small things, God will increase it. When you are faithful in small things, I said God will increase it. When you're faithful in giving what looks small, to you it may look small, but God is looking for how, how faithful you are. Because how faithful you are will also determine the experience and the things God will be doing through you. It, it, there is a need for you to know where God wants you to partner, who he wants you to partner with, where he wants you to partner with. Because partnership helps every one of us to fulfill our ministry. Partnership helps every one of us to fulfill our ministry. I, I can't be able to do all I do today if I don't have people putting those videos on YouTube. On, I can't do everything. If I come here and tell you I can't be able to do everything, I'm lying to you. I can't do everything. I can't do everything. But there are people in this ministry that is helping in different ways who write on the blog, who helps on the books, who helps consigning the finances, who are one way. we are all working as a team to reach the nations. And that is what the gospel entails, that every one of us bring our potential, our ability, our resources to be able to reach more and more people. Partnership is ministry. When you are partnering, you are in the ministry. You are helping to carry out the Great Commission. The Great Commission will cost money. The Great Commission will take time. The Great Commission will take resources. It will take energy. Imagine a preacher preaching and he just fell and collapsed. And the, 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 the preacher haven't eaten for three days. And but he was preaching to people, but nobody cared. You remember the story in Second Kings chapter four, the wife of the one of the sons of the prophet, the man of God. You know, he said the husband did fear the Lord, but they were in debt, and the creditors came to carry the two sons to become slaves. But there were people who that man's ministry has ministered to, have touched their lives. You see, it is ungodly. That will muzzle the horse that tread the corn. It's ungodly. That will muzzle the horse that tread the ox that tread the corn. We the, the, the one that brings the word of God to us, the one that ministers to us, is ungodly. And this is why we were encouraged to be a blessing to those that God has put in our life, our teachers. He said, Can them you know honor them? Those who teach you, those who minister to you, he says you honor them. There is a great blessing when we begin to honor those God put in our life. We, we pray for them, we pray for their family, that they will be able, if your leader is distracted, you will be able to feed you well spiritually. If, if your leader is distracted, you know, go to churches where the leader is distracted, he can't feed the people very well. Look at, imagine the pastor is pursuing his business, pursuing that business. When will the pastor have the time to read his Bible? When will the pastor have time to come to church and, and, and really preach the word? Because the man is after his business. He wants to also take care of his family. But imagine that people in that local assembly will say, Pastor, we we'll prefer you, you sit down, read the word of God, come and teach us, come and bless us. We will take care of other areas of you that you needed to go out and take care of. You see, that makes the work easy. You see, partnership will help the ministry to grow. It helps the minister to be focused. There are a lot of preachers today that are looking for opportunities to go to places to preach because their local church can't even take care of them. Their local church can't even pay their bills, so they have to go to this convention, they have to go to that convention on their own. Most of those preachers want to be in that local church, pastor the people, raise the people, but when they look at the income that comes into that local church, it can take care of their bills, it can take care of things, frustration is building, they start looking for ways, can I come, can I come here? People are not asking, can I come? When they're not supposed to be doing that, they have to travel to places, they have no business to travel to, going to places God did not call them to go. Why? Because of finances. We shouldn't allow that to happen to our leaders. We should be the one to say, oh, Pastor, every month I should be able to give you $200. Every month I should be able to give you $100. Every month I should be able to give you $50 to maybe to get water to drink. 
Maybe to get toiletries. Maybe to get this or that one thing or the other that, that you need for the work of the ministry. But what you need for the work of the ministry? I'll be able to do this. I'll be able to do that. By doing that, you are helping to reduce the burden on the preacher as he can concentrate and teach. When I hear people say, oh, that church, the word of God is not there. Oh, that ministry, the word. The question is, how many hours do the preacher spend on the word? Does the preacher even read the word? Because she's out looking for business. She's out doing her shop, you know. So when will she have time to read and have revelation? Then come and bless you. Then you see that this is why a lot of people are not really growing spiritually. Because most of the people that are supposed to be laboring the word, they are after their businesses and other things. So they just come and say one or two things and go. But someone said, but I'm not growing. I'm not growing. The, the message is not ministering to me. The message is not ministering to me. How can the message minister to you when 90% of the time the person was outside? He was not even praying. He was not listening to God's word. Nothing was working. So you come to church. You go back the same way you came. Game. People don't know what contributes to most of the problem because the most of the preachers are not settled. And this is why we need to change this mentality and say, well, I am going to do my part. As everyone in this ministry, in this vision, would do their part to support the preaching of the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this to you. Be a blessing to your preacher. Be a blessing to that local church, to that ministry where you go and feed on the word of God. Be a blessing. Don't just be taking those teachings and listening to them, enjoying it, and you don't contribute. How will it continue? How will that ministry grow to reach more people? It is when people partner with it that that ministry grow and be a blessing to everyone who connects with that ministry. I pray that this teaching will be a blessing to you and help you to connect in partnership, to be able to reach out to others, to be able to say, hey, that teaching has been blessing me. This is what I'll be doing to ensure that you stay focused. Sometimes we can help the preachers stay focused. We can help the ministers stay focused and encourage them in different ways. Let them know that, hey, my heart is with you. I'm there with you. I'm praying for you. That you continue. A lot of preachers give up uh, backslide, resign from their local churches and go into the wall and start doing things they are not supposed to do. This is time to wake up for your preacher, pray for your preacher, look for a way to support him, look for a way to support that ministry as that ministry will fulfill its mandate on the face of the earth. If you are watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, means you're born again, and the Holy Ghost is going to lead you from this day forward. I want you to take advantage of my videos on YouTube. Subscribe to Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. Subscribe to Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. And also, I want to encourage you to keep watching FinishWalkTV.com. FinishWalkTV.com is a ministry on the cutting edge. And also, you can get my new book on Amazon. It's 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future by Faith Man of Weather. 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future. And also, you can partner with this ministry today on PayPal is Faithman Teaching at gmail.com. On PayPal is Faithman Teaching at gmail.com. Thank you for watching this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, don't ever forget there is greatness in you.